how much time do you have to manually adjust thousands, millions of bids? When I was a customer of Techmetrics, I had 5,000 SKUs, 25 brands I was managing, literally millions of targets that I was exposed to. I needed something way smarter than me and way more efficient than mm -hmm. I could be to adjust the bids in a direction that I set them yep. to, to achieve. And I don't have time for that, right. right? I'm worried about managing my team or managing my client relationships or making sure the shipment comes in or what, whatever sellers worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. We want you to not have to worry about what our system is doing because we're showing you the results that you're telling us to produce for you. Artificial intelligence isn't just an abstract concept anymore. It's a reality and sellers on Amazon, Walmart and beyond are using it to manage thousands of tasks automatically and they're using it to grow at scale. Tickmetrics Flywheel 2.0 has leveraged AI for quite some time now and this video invites Jake Wilk to break down exactly how you can use AI-based tools to improve sales in e-commerce and what that looks like specifically within the Tickmetrics Flywheel ecosystem. This is a really good conversation with Jake. It makes AI digestible and easier to understand. So let's jump in and let's hear what Jake has to say. Jake, welcome back. Morning. We've had you on a couple pieces of content before. Yep. This is a very interesting one. The other pieces of content have been very product focused and that leads into this conversation very well about artificial intelligence, AI. Prefacing the conversation, AI has come into the spotlight more recently in the grand scheme of um, media and just conversations in general, mostly because of things like ChatGPT, yep. where I think, uh, the, the wheels are finally starting to turn in people's heads around how AI can actually help in everyday life. Yep. And for e-commerce sellers, everyday life is advertising, it's yep. selling, it's inventory management. Whatever it is, AI uh, has come into the spotlight, but we've been doing it at Dicometrics Years. Yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And my goal with this conversation is to make AI much more tangible in people's minds. Yeah. So how it's actually impacting the selling process, how it has been in the past and how it is today. I think a good place to start in this whole conversation would, would be the analogy of the, the ship, the sailboat yeah. that you, that we were just talking about before pressing record. Yeah, absolutely. So I, tell me about that. Tell well, me about I that. think contextually there's one point I want to make before sure, my, my sure. sailboat analogy, but is trust is a big adjacent topic to the hot button of AI, right? Mm -hmm. How do you trust what's inside the black box? Well, how do you contextualize what is happening? Most often sellers trust results. Mm -hmm. They trust efficiency in their ad spend. They trust growth in their top line. They, you know, wh whatever it is that they see something happening as a result of an implementation of, of a tool or of AI, for example, that, Im that builds trust, right? But it's hard to contextualize and trust every micro adjustment that's mm -hmm. happening. I think, AI can only go so far without human instruction. Mm -hmm. Human instruction in the context of what are the goals of my products? Uh, how profitable do I need to be to advertise these products? That steering is essential to inform AI and give us the context we need to be successful. And that's the analogy of, of the ship. You can pop up a sail on a sailboat, but if you're not steering it just the right way to catch the wind, you're not going to go as fast or as far or as straight in the on course go. in the direction you want to go, right? And that's essential with the AI. If you turn everything over to AI blindly, it'll probably do marginally better than you could do on your own manually. Yeah. However, there there's going to be a ceiling that you're mm -hmm. going to hit. However, if you can inform AI, here's where I need my ACoS to be, to be profitable or to be on target. And oh, by the way, um, incorporating details about where your products are in their life cycle, mm -hmm. And do you have an opportunity to inform AI that, hey, inventory position has changed. We need to liquidate this subset of our catalog. Well, then the AI can run a playbook to, to match that. And then that's, that's where we're charting, right? So, so our AI system is taking into account the hourly data that's coming over from Amazon Marketing Stream to make intraday adjustments at the hourly level. So we're taking into account time of day conversion rate, average order values, cost per click trends to make individual day adjustments. We're also taking into account tentpole, tentpole seasonality, right? So if yep. we're looking at Prime Day or Turkey Five or any of that stuff, our system is building predictive models to adjust for those seasonal events. But if you can combine all of that data that we're crunching and the adjustments that we're making for you automatically mm -hmm. or via AI with instruction, then it gets 
pretty powerful and dangerous in my opinion. So it's the, kind of zooming out, it's the ingestion of thousands, millions of data points. Millions, yeah. Um, on an hourly basis. Correct. Uh, or a different timetable, but out, let's say hourly yeah, in this example. Hourly is a good... Yeah. Millions of data points on the hourly level. It's the ingestion of all those data points and the understanding of what all those data points mean, how they interact with each other, and it's the output of action exactly. based on those. So that that's kind of what... That's the general idea here. Right. What... Oh, go, go oh, ahead. And, and just adjacent mm -hmm. to that, I, I was going to say, everybody, another hot button topic, especially in the advertising spaces, well, how do you day part Amazon ads? Yes. Day parting is a big piece of it. And I think that's really correlative to predictive modeling and mm -hmm. what do you do at different times of the day? Well, day parting requires, tr traditional day parting requires some human rules or instruction to know what to do when or what to preserve right. certain budget for when. Well, our AI system is essentially trying to do that same thing, but preserving your budget and your peak spending periods for times where you're going to earn the most in return. Yep. And, and, and so it's not traditional day parting, but mm -hmm. it's taking into account where you should be at different times of the day to produce the optimal efficiency, sales levels, whatever the goal is of mm -hmm. that campaign or advertising strategy you're running. The day parting of it all is happening behind the scenes in the black box of the, the in, AI. In this example, you talked about, uh, going back to the analogy of the ship, the human steering yep. um, to to being a, a big part of it to to lead in the direction that you want to go, right? To get to your destination. Yep. In this example of like, let's say day parting or something like it, where's the human, what's the human interaction there? Yeah, so today it's giving us boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Setting the course of saying, don't go below this bid or above this bid, right? Because I think that's important. Yeah. People need to feel that sense of control to not overspend or underspend where they need to be. And then um, it's also telling us via an ACOS target, for example, um, how aggressive you want us to be on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you know you can afford to spend up to a certain level of your profit on ads or you're intending to, having that instruction will be essential to help you get to that endpoint. Yeah. Right. And then when you marry that with life cycle of your catalog, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the next path that we're going down at Techometrics, um, it's, it's going to be really powerful in the sense that not only are we doing everything we can to inform our bidding day to day on the goals you've given us to try to hit, but then also we're taking into account the needs of your inventory in a more dynamic way. And as those needs change, we run different playbooks to help you be more profitable on your hero SKUs or liquidate you know, SKUs that need to get off your books or launch a new product. All of those things can be run in the black box, in the AI, with that human instruction from the beginning. So let's, let's talk about that, that yeah. uh, the life cycle yeah. area and, and AI and kind of infusing into that. That's that's something that's coming very soon. For, very soon. Yeah. Take a metrics. Describe that to me and describe the, the AI interaction. In yeah. So we're going to label that as our, our goal based bidding strategy. It's already far down the path in our testing phase with selective customers and beta tests. Um, but it's essentially like what I said, as you have different conditions within your catalog, you could instruct our AI by labeling your SKUs as one of those classifications. And that instructs our AI to do different things mm. over time, right? So if you're telling us that, hey, we need to be more profitable for 40% of my SKUs, but then this 20% I'm classifying as, you know, growth or launch or something where you're trying to stimulate more volume. Well, if you're willing to stimulate more volume, then you're more willing to not care as much about ACOS in that scenario right. because volume is the goal there. You're, right. you're, you're, you're looking for impressions and clicks and click through rate and how are you able to stimulate traffic to your pages. And so I think that combined with telling us where you need to be more from an infrastructure standpoint of cost, a cost targeting bid ranges, along with the goals and where your products are in their life cycle, I think will a help people feel in control yep. of the AI, but you should also see results that build that trust. Like we talked about before yep. to say, Hey, I told the system to drive more traffic to these, these products. And now my organic rank is increasing because mm. I, you know, now have more sales that come from that or more reviews or whatever the objective is. Um, our AI should have a playbook to run for any aspect of your catalog's life cycle. Yep. It's, it's you setting the destination on the map. Yes. And exactly right. And the AI taking care of mostly getting there. Exactly right. right. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're setting the, the, the destination on your Google maps or whatever yeah. it is. And, and the Tesla auto drive. Yeah. And we're charting that course. Right. Yep. And we're saying 
this is the best route to take to mm. get you there. And um, I think that that builds that implicit trust of seeing the results of your actions. But it's also not autopilot, right? I still right, think right. a human in the loop is necessary to to drive Set the, the car or to, to, to yeah. go like hand on the steering wheel, like exactly in right. The Tesla auto drive, exactly right. right. Um, as those detours arise or things change, like you still need to be able to pivot yes. midstream as yes. as things happen. Um, one last concept. Well, that that's very tangible. The goals based is I think very tangible for people to understand. Like yep. I want to decrease my ACOS, or I'm yep. launching a product, or whatever it is, or whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is, like that. Uh, uh, tying integrating with AI and AI taking care of a lot of the necessary aspects of thousands of data points to get there. And I think it helps sellers contextualize it in a way where they feel as though the controls they have make sense to their business needs and their business goals. And we can delight them with results yep. and helping them achieve those goals after the results looking are what, at the data. I mean, the results are what matter. Exactly like that's right. The and that's going to be the best way to build trust with a seller, right? right. Is if you execute and the proof is in the pudding, then you build that loyalty and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, they, they trust that your system is working in their best interest. And I, I think as we continue to contextualize more of those, those valves and those controls that the sellers will have with our platform, they'll, able, they'll be able to produce better results and more optimal results for the needs of their catalog as, as time changes. As time goes on, I, I see more and more the necessity of AI to stay competitive, but also literally just to succeed partly because of how much competition is coming into the space, but sure. also just how complex uh, the nature of e-commerce is in digesting all that information and making changes. One thing, one last concept I want people to really understand and think about is what life would be like without AI. Like you take AI out of the equation just right now where things are in the market. Yeah. What is life like for those sellers without that? Yeah, it's, it's hard to answer that in the vacuum because if you say, if you're taking it away from everyone at the same time, mm -hmm. then I think there would be almost like a, a static response, right? But sure. if you take it away from some, others will find a way to develop competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really where we are right now is everybody's trying to figure out the best way to get to that destination that you're setting on the map. Yep. Um, and well, it's, it's a, it's, because AI is taking care of so many different data points, right? right. Let's say someone's integrated in our system. They, AI is taking care of like thousands upon thousands of changes right. or, or readings every single day from data points. You take that out, all of a sudden that responsibility gets put on you as a seller to yeah. manually How much time do you change yeah. input. Exactly. How much time do you have to manually adjust thousands, millions of bids? When I was a customer of Techometrics, I had 5,000 SKUs, 25 brands I was managing, literally millions of targets that I was exposed to. I needed something way smarter than me and way more efficient than mm -hmm. I could be to adjust the bids in a direction that I set them yep. to to achieve. And I don't have time for that, right. right? I'm worried about managing my team or managing my client relationships or making sure the shipment comes in or what, whatever sellers worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. We want you to not have to worry about yep. what our system is doing because we're showing you the results that you're telling us to mm -hmm. produce for you. Really good concepts. I think that makes uh, AI much more tangible in people's yeah. minds. I'm excited for the things that are in the works for what's up next for Take Metrics. And I uh, want to thank you for, for uh, making those, these concepts really tangible. So thank you, Jake. No doubt. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Ken. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much for joining this conversation about artificial intelligence. There's a lot to dive into when it comes to AI and e-commerce. Things are changing at a really rapid pace and we're experiencing a lot of this ongoing. So. Subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with all things AI and e-com. And of course, to gain access to artificial intelligence in e-commerce, sign up for Ticketmetrics for free. You can start leveraging AI right now today in your own e-commerce operations and your own advertising on Amazon, Walmart, and beyond. And it's free to sign up and to check out. So click below to sign up for Ticketmetrics Flywheel 2.0 for free, and we'll see you there.